All right, today I'm talking about a Toyota pickup truck that I believe may be the last great Toyota pickup truck to buy. Now, why am I saying that? Because of what's under the hood. This is their dynamic force engine V6. And this is a 2023 Toyota Tacoma four wheel drive top of the line TRD. This is the last time they're putting a six cylinder engine in them. As of 2024, Toyota says they're only gonna have four cylinder turbos and four cylinder hybrid in the TRDs. They're ditching the six cylinder engine, which to me is a gigantic mistake. If you ask any truck guy, they'll tell you Toyota screwed up when they took the V8 out of the Tundra and put the V6 twin turbo. People wanted a big giant truck. They got a Tundra, they can tow a ton, they can last basically forever. And yeah, they get horrible gas mileage. But guess what? This guy brought me one of the twin turbo V6s in a Tundra and it was even a hybrid. He only got 19 miles a gallon on the highway. So much for great gas mileage. Not only was it the twin turbo, but it was a hybrid. It still got crap gas mileage. So that's just a stupid idea. And in terms of these, people like these TRDs for their performance, what they can tow. Toyota, you're making a big mistake only going to four cylinder turbo or four cylinder hybrid and here's why you can take all the figures about horsepower and torque and throw them out the window because they are all relative this puts out a lot of horsepower a lot of torque people get these to go off road they get them to tow boats pull heavy trailers throw a bunch of crap in the back the v6 a lot of torque and takeoff power for pulling and towing taking a boat in especially out of the lake right now the four cylinder turbos they can put out a lot of horsepower too but it's a different kind of horsepower and torque it comes at a much higher rpm now when you're pulling the boat in or out of towing stuff you really want to be revving your engine way up to get it going and in most cases americans drive 96 percent automatic transmissions you can't really rev it up like with a standard transmission right so they are not going to tow as good they're not going to be as good off-road vehicles they will not be able to carry as much weight in the bed without having too much acceleration lag you don't spend this kind of money on a pickup truck to get yourself a dog now of course for ages the Comas have had four-cylinder engines they started out with four-cylinder engines but they don't have the power that a lot of people want. For example, my son's got a two-year-old TRD with a V6. He also has an older one that's a regular Tacoma with a four-cylinder. The four-cylinder one is pretty much a dog acceleration. It's a great work truck for kicking equipment, saws, you name it, around. It's not made for pulling a lot of weight. Some people want that. Yeah, and that's totally fine. My son's got a four and a six. He's got two of them. But if you're gonna buy a TRD, you want a bigger engine in it. Just like to go even further, as I said before, you want a Tundra. The guys really wanted V8s. They didn't want a V6 engine. But you know, I think Toyota's making a big mistake doing this downsizing and putting a four cylinder turbo. Hence, this may be the last great truck that Toyota's built, as far as I'm concerned, for people who are serious about trucks. I'm not talking about people that just piddle around, take the kids to soccer games. I'm talking about people who want a serious truck. And this TRD, hey, it's got a serious price, so I would expect to get a serious truck. For example, this one was purchased for $45,000. You expect to get power and things that you want for that kind of money, right? You're gonna buy something like a Ford Maverick pickup truck. Yeah, they cost a ton less, right? They don't have the power, and they certainly don't have the long life that Toyotas historically have. And going back to the Turbo 4 instead of the six-cylinder engine, guess what? The Turbo 4 is going to wear out faster. You put a smaller engine in the same size truck, it's not going to last as long. So not only do you not have the actual power when you're taking off, it won't last as long. So really, Toyota, why oh why are you getting rid of this engine that a lot of people like okay 
Maybe you want your gas mileage ratings to go better for the EPA. Well, sell smaller four-cylinder versions, but when you got your top of the line Tacoma TRD, don't water it down in order to appease government bureaucrats. Now, the guy just bought this. He loves a truck. It's his work truck, and you're gonna see. He's got all his crap in it. It's a serious work truck, but he's kind of mad, and I don't blame him. They talked him into paying $1,000 for a tire warranty setup. And He's got a bad tire. Not only does he hate the idea, he's got to go through this warranty claim. They're not going to replace all four tires. Now, this is a four-wheel drive vehicle. Excellent technology. It's all electronically controlled. You have vehicles like this, you're supposed to have all four tires. The same exact size. All the four-wheel drive system is electronically controlled. If you get a bad tire, you got to buy all four four tires. They have to be the same exact circumference because if one's worn more than another, the drive system is going to have to compensate. It'll mess around with the transfer cases because it keeps compensating because the tires aren't the same size. When a tire goes bad on one of these, you're supposed to buy all four, but the warranty that he paid a thousand bucks for won't replace all four tires. He said, wait a second, I got a warranty. So will you fill us out? We're going to replace the bad tire, but they're not going to replace all four tires, which should have to. He paid for the warranty. Now, this just isn't limited to Toyota. One of your viewers had the same problem with the Subaru, and they're all all-wheel drive except for their one little race car, right? So, he had a tire blow under warranty. They gave him a tire, and he said, wait a second, this tire's got 20,000 miles on it. All the other ones do. You told me if I buy tires, I gotta buy all four. Now, you're telling me you're not gonna replace all four under the warranty? Oh, no, only the one is bad, so we're only replacing it. This is the kind of idiots that work at the dealerships that are crooked, dishonest. If you were paying out of your pocket, they would say, we got to replace all four tires. But when it's coming off of their, in quotes, warranty that you pay extra money for and they don't replace them, do what this guy's doing. He's going to cancel the warranty. Stop paying on it. It's in his monthly payment. You know, it doesn't look like much because you add it to your monthly payment, but it's still $1,000 and they're not even being honest about it and replacing all four like they should. So, think twice before you buy one of these warranties if you've got a four-wheel drive vehicle. A thousand bucks is a thousand bucks, and when they don't do what they're supposed to do, hey, don't buy such things. Look at the truck, you can see. It's dirty. It is his work truck. He is not fooling around. There's his work clothes. There's his work tools. He's got tarps and everything on the back. This guy is screwing around. He's using this thing as a work truck. Now, as any truck, you're going to get much worse gas mileage in cities than on a highway. You got like 30 on a highway. For a truck this size, four-wheel drive, that's great gas mileage. He says he gets 16, 18 in town, which is typical what you're going to get. But on a highway, hey, 30 is really good gas mileage because Toyota Dynamic Force V6, it's got dual fuel injection, it's got fuel injectors, on the intake on all six, but it's also got gasoline direct injectors and fancy computer systems switch back and forth. That's how it can have all this power, but still get 30 miles a gallon on the highway. And I find this hilarious because if you remember the video I did last year, the guy with the 2023 Tundra with the V6 twin turbo, he only got 19 miles a gallon on the highway. <laughs> and this guy's getting 30. The V6 engine. Definite success in the Tacoma, but in the big giant Tundra, definitely a failure as far as I'm concerned. They should have stuck to the V8s. As a matter of fact, this guy says, this will probably be the last Toyota he ever buys. And then he's gonna go back to a V8 and he's probably gonna get a Ford because as he said, Ford is probably the only company that's still serious about building big V8 trucks, which a lot of people one. As a matter of fact, he was going to buy a Tundra, but they stopped putting the V8 engines in it. So, he's happy with it so far, but he is a V8 man. They want the real takeoff and torque and pulling power. They just have more. There's a reason they made V8 engines in the first place. And a lighter vehicle like this, V6 is fine. But you want a heavy, full-size truck, Really, V8's the only way to go. Go inside this Tacoma. You can see it still has some logical stuff to it. Look, a real parking brake, not some electronic pile of crap. This is what guys that work want. They want something like this. Now, unfortunately, it also has a start button. You can't do anything about that. They make them all that way. But 
when we talk about the four-wheel drive, it's all very simple. You can go two-wheel drive, four-wheel low, four-wheel high, just by turning a switch. Look at the screen. It's in the dash. That's what I find hilarious because I like them in the dash. It looks good, right? It fits in with a truck. Toyota, I don't know what you got thinking, but all your other vehicles, they got that monitor sticking up here. Yep. It looks like somebody glued it to the car. This is a nice one. It's right here where you can actually see the thing, and it's not blocking your view. This obviously was not an afterthought like their other ones are who knows what they got going on with their engineers this does have intelligent cruise control but the owner of this hates cruise control so it meant nothing to him but you got 400 watts of ac 120 dual climate control i mean this is a loaded truck and there's quite a bit of room in the back seat when he takes all his crap out of it the man's like me he doesn't want anybody riding with him i go motorcycle you know with one seat on it well he just fills the seats up so nobody else can ride with him so he's got his own private vehicle there. but now he has to clean it because he's gonna ride with me and break his own rule <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start it up back it up you can see it's got a decent camera so you can see what's happening and it's not as heavy as a tundra but it's got enough weight that it should take these rhode island horrendous road bumps in stride we'll see what happens here we go pretty smooth ride for a truck that's raised this high you know we'll see how it takes off there's nobody coming that way no that way here we go and he's he's hanging on i heard a couple of squeals there before the traction control kicked in but you can see it's got a lot of pulling power and if you replace this nice six cylinder engine with a four banger it would take a lot longer for it to spool up and get that pickup and you wouldn't be getting great four cylinder gas mods then before this he had a four cylinder and he just told me he didn't have any power at all he got us way he got this v6 he is definitely someone who would not buy this vehicle if it had the four cylinder engine in it and there's a lot of people believe me that feel that way now there's a lot of people that'll buy a regular tacoma with a four cylinder they don't want power they want a reliable truck that'll run forever but this is a trd it's supposed to have all the bells and whistles and it's certainly not a turd they're gonna have a hard time selling them if you ask me if all they're gonna have is a turbo and a hybrid version they're gonna chase a lot of their clientele away probably the last great truck that toyota's building the way things seem to be going not a fan of the turbo the hybrid and that's all they're gonna have in 2024 they're retiring the six it was bad enough that they retired the v8 and the tundra now they're retiring the v6 and this now to me that makes no sense they don't understand americans and what americans want in an upper line truck they understand the lower line trucks there's no arguing that but the upper line trucks hey they should have left this thing well enough alone so if you're thinking about getting one you better hurry up because there's not too many 2023s left and when there's just 2024s and up you won't be able to get the setup anymore brand new toyota tundra this is the twin turbo v6 this is also a hybrid and it's got about 18 19,000 miles on it now and you're gonna find out the truth not hype although people say i'm a toyota fan but watch some of my videos you'll see that i'm honest about the most so let's give an honest review of this okay i mean it's a beautiful looking truck there's no arguing that it's four wheel drive and it can tow it's rated at 12,000 pounds yeah they don't use the v8 engines anymore a v6 engine with twin turbos and a hybrid boost system now this is the second year that really mass producing them the early ones they had a problem with the turbo well it turns out it wasn't really the turbo more a wiring problem you could disconnect the negative cable or toyota fixes it with a software upgrade so the guys that did take the turbos off took the cabs off all that work they're hidden way down in there right they really didn't have to do that toyota generally figures things out when there's a problem they analyze it figure out what's wrong and they fix it this particular one i don't expect any turbo problems he hasn't had any yet 19,000 miles now the hybrid system is more or less a unique hybrid system it's not what you see on the other toyotas it has a motor between the engine and the transmission so when the electric motor gives boost it's giving boost directly to the transmission and in this case it's four-wheel drive and it goes to the transfer case it goes to whatever wheels you want it to go to it's more or less a mild hybrid system it puts out 437 horsepower 
and 583 pound-feet of torque. That's strong, and the thing is, they know turbos put out power, but there's always a little bit of lag. Well, it's where the hybrid comes in. Electric motors have no lag. They have pretty much full torque as soon as you turn them on. At 2,600 RPM, the motor itself puts out full torque. So it's putting out torque at a lower RPM. If you saw the video I made in Rhode Island with that Polaris, okay, it was a little vehicle and it put out 203 horsepower. It put out those horsepower 8,250 RPMs. <laughs> now, that sucker was spinning, right? In order to get full power on that thing, you were redlining the vehicle. And the thing got even below teens. It sometimes it get eight, nine miles a gallon, even though it was small, because it was getting it at really high RPMs. This does it at lower RPMs, which is better. Now, being a Toyota, it's got the dual system for the fuel injection. It's got regular port injectors, and it also has G injectors and Toyota system flips back and forth to make it run the best and if you see that shiny bit of aluminum down there okay there's a cooler there there's a vent for it there's a cooler here then on the other side there's a vent for it there's another cooler down in here so each of the turbos has its own cooler but it's more than that back in the day guys had turbos they tell them don't shut the engine off let it run to cool everything down well these babies have electric fans so if you're lazy and you just turn it off and go away got electric fans that can cool it down even when a vehicle is shut down so it will cool them up so they won't overheat now like I said a lot of people complained about problems with turbochargers in the first modern year but that was more or less a minor wire in the software problem which they figured out it wasn't actually the turbos themselves now it's got 13 inch disc with dual opposed pistons so it's got great brakes but as with all Tundras it's got one downside the gas hogs <laughs> the guy admits it gets 18 miles a gallon pretty much no matter what he does so all this technology they're not phenomenal it's a big heavy vehicle you're not going to get phenomenal gas mileage it's just like the dodges that have little hybrid systems on them but they're gas hogs too <laughs> you get a big heavy truck it's going to be a gas hog so basically changing it for gas mileage really didn't do all that much it's more power and design than it is gas mileage because you can never get good gas mileage in a gigantic vehicle unless you go full electric and then it's a completely different ball game you deal with gigantic batteries and infrastructure that doesn't exist you know this has plenty of power doesn't have the lag now they do make them non-hybrid but in this case i don't advise it because you're lagging in horsepower you're lagging in torque you're going to strain the engine even more realize the big advantage having a motor built right on the flywheel was you're taking a lot of strain off of your engine when you take off from a stop and when you accelerate that's what strains an engine when you take off well the electric motor is taking a lot of that brunt so it can make the engine actually last longer it shows toyota's engineers know what they're doing let's take the corollas right they have transmissions in those that are CVT transmissions. I'm not a big fan, but they got a launch gear. So they launch on an actual gear. So the strain on the CVT of taking off from zero to whatever is now done on an actual gear. So they could make the CVT smaller, lighter, and they don't break because the big strain of taking off is done by the actual gear. Well, in this case, you're really better off getting a hybrid because i had customers that bought these without the hybrid and they complained about the power delivery they'd be happy if they were getting 18 miles a gallon i had some of them that were getting 12 miles a gallon with the normal one not the hybrid in this case the hybrid is more of a boost system and hey we're gonna find out when we take it for a road test but from what i've seen so far it works pretty good now we'll go to the back seat and we'll see how they're well designed if you remember the one I did on the Dodge, they hid the battery under the passenger seat. You had to take the passenger seat apart to get to it. Well, guess what? The battery's right in here. Easy to get to. Easy to replace. Easy to check. Now, to me, that's a big deal, especially it should be to you northern boys and gals. Because if you have a plug-in hybrid or a full electric car, they generally put the batteries on the bottom of the car. The salt will destroy them over time. They're not perfectly sealed. They got air gaps. Salt gets in there in the winter and it will destroy them. If you drive slow and are cruising very cautiously, 
you can run on the battery system. But he said the most has gone is maybe five or six miles, but he also warned if you step on the gas, then it'll automatically turn the motor back on on demand to make it go down the road. This isn't something for driving around as an electric vehicle. You could use it kind of as a toy to sneak up on your friends when you're fishing the last couple miles or something, you know? <laughs> but it's not a plug-in hybrid by any stretch of the imagination. It's a big vehicle, it's a small battery. As we go under the truck, and what do we see? Check out the suspension. It is not leaf springs. They joined the 21st century. They also offer an air ride system that's customizable, various settings. This doesn't have it. As it sits now, it's a $60,000 truck. They've really done a lot of changes that people really don't know about. The main thing that I want to see is how the power works. So let's get it down the road. Okay, let's start her up. Wow, check it out. Cool screen. Let's do that over again. I like that screen. Got the 14 inch screen. Man, you can see. This isn't some cheesy little screen. You can actually see what's going on behind. There's the mailbox that I often hit, so we'll go the other direction. It'll be safer. That is one screen, and the definition's unbelievable. Now, the transmission is a 10 speed. We're gonna just drive it the way it is, but if you want, you can put it in regular, and then you can shift it up or down if you want. But Toyota makes their own transmission, so I don't expect any problems with them. You can see it wasn't lying. It's getting 18 miles a gallon. It has a tow mode, tow mode plus. This thing is really well thought out, I gotta say. Sport mode, you can see sport mode. There's many modes, tow mode, eco mode, but we're gonna do sport. And it has standard brake controller for towing. Seems to handle pretty good in the twisties here. It's gonna make a big difference having that suspension not being just old fashioned leaf spring. This thing rides so much better. My grandson's 2012 Tundra that just has leaf springs on it. Now we're going along here, and I felt those brakes, man, they felt pretty good. Here we go to our little drag race. We'll see how these twin turbos with a little electric motor boost do. Now you are. Get set. Go. Smooth shifting. Gets up and goes. But I gotta say, I miss the V8. I miss the sound. And the V8 actually does have, I don't know, rating is rating. To me, it's got more torque. It's got more, throws you back in the seat more. <laughs> of course, it's not a 10 speed transmission either, like this one. It'd make a big deal of difference. I mean, you stop on the gas, we're going 52. You can see. It's gone, but not like a V8. I missed the V8. And if you're curious, the hybrid battery is nickel metal. They're not using lithium. It's easier to build. They're not affected by temperature as much. And after all, it's a boost. This isn't a full electric vehicle. All these screens and everything, you can change them around. And if you want to learn about that and more, check out Stephen Welch's channel. He's a big Toyota tech guy. You can learn an awful lot about Toyotas from him. As you can see, so scrolling through, there's all kinds of things that you can change. And you can change all the different meters. You can have transmission temperature. You can have boost pressure. All kinds of stuff. You can do pitch and roll on it if you're doing a little off-roading. Even checks all your lights if you want. <laughs> Automatically. So what do I think of this 2023 Tundra? I gotta say, it's a very interesting machine with the hybrid boost on it. It doesn't have the lag that the non-hybrid one does with the twin turbos. I still like the V8, but that's just me. I like V8 engines. And do realize, even with all this technology, including coolers and special louvers and a little air dam on the bottom that comes down, it still only gets 18 miles a gallon. So, <laughs> not for you speed freaks, the governor's out at 107, so it's not a racing truck. And even though it's rated at 19 and 22, he gets 18, no matter what he does. All these figures, bleh, and that's not towing anything. You tow anything, the gas mileage is going down because it does tow 12,000 pounds. And I guarantee you, if you tow 12,000 pounds, you're not even going to get 18 miles a gallon. That's just what it is when you got all that weight. But the torque and the power that it has. I was kind of surprised that it had turbo problems because Toyota engineers are pretty good. You know, they seem to know what the heck they're doing. You're thinking about getting one, do this one test. Drive the non-hybrid, then drive the hybrid, then make your decision from that. I have to say, probably the all-around best made forerunners were in the 90s when they can run forever. I've seen them with 500, 700,000 miles on. You get a car that's that old, you're gonna have problems. Cars from the 80s, early 90s, they're really old, right? And they get a lot worse gas mods than the modern technology that Toyota has. 
So, if you want to get a very reliable Toyota 4Runner and SUV in this size, this 2021 is a phenomenal example of it. Now, Toyota is no longer gonna put these V6 engines in the Tacomas. Here's my son's four-cylinder Tacoma, and he has this, but a four-cylinder, so he bought a TRD 4x4 Sport with a V6 to tow boats, to haul around, to drive around out in the countryside and on his land, because he wants the power of a V6 and all-wheel drive. Presently, the 2024s are out, they still got the V6s, but it looks like they're gonna do the same thing that they did with the Comas. They're gonna get rid of the V6, replace it with a four cylinder turbo. And if they do that to this 4Runner, I think it's a big mistake because the towing and hauling of a Turbo 4 is much different than a V6. They can give you all their baloney figures of, well, it's got this much horsepower and it's got this much blah, blah. The four cylinder turbo Turbos cannot pull like the V6 engines, period. You're taking a boat in out of the water, you're going off-road in the dirt. Turbos take longer to kick in, they build the horsepower. It's a completely different driving experience. You don't have the instant torque and the pulling power instantly as you do in a V6, which is one reason I didn't like the Toyota took the V8 out of the Tundras. Now, the Tundras you can only get in a six twin turbo, right? Well, my grandson's got a V8 Tundra. He tows stuff off all over the place with this giant big trailer that he's got, right? That same trailer, friend of his, has a new Tundra with a V6 twin turbo, and he says it does not tow like his V8 did. The V8s just have that grunt torque that even a V6 doesn't have, and you put the turbos on it, on paper, the V6 is supposed to have more torque, more horsepower, but not really in regular driving situations. That's on a dyno. Unless you're driving your vehicle on a dyno and not on the road, it doesn't mean anything. You want the extra power, in his case, if you're towing heavy loads. And the reason that they sell the heck out of these forerunners is because they serve purposes for just about everybody. They're nice inside, they got a lot of room, front and back, they got a lot of trunk space. You push these seats forward, man, you're gonna have all kinds of room to haul stuff, and you can tow a lot if you need to. Why? Because of what's under the hood. Well, take off the stupid beauty cover. Super dependable V6 engines. They can run forever, and it's got all the modern technology so that it gets good gas mileage for a vehicle that's this big and this heavy. And being a forerunner, at least the one sold there in the United States, check it out. Made in Japan. J means Japan. This baby was made in Japan. These forerunners have such a great track record. I have customers that have 500, 600. I had a customer that had 750,000 miles on one of these things. That's what people want. And this particular one is a four-wheel drive one. So just like my son's fancy Tacoma, it's not gonna get stuck anywhere. Got good clearance. And I hope it doesn't happen that they ditch the six and put in a turbo four. They're talking about doing that in 2025 we'll see if you're watching this in 2025 you'll know right but i hate to see him do it you have something that is ultra dependable pretty much all round suv that can do with four-wheel drive just about anything you'd want to do right i've seen people drive these things in moab utah on those crazy skinny dirt roads going down to the plateau that's kind of mule traffic and these things go through them perfectly fine i'd hate to see that and ruin that vehicle and throw in a four-cylinder turbo. And as we go under, what do you see? They're full-frame vehicles. Full-frame. Adds to weight, adds to reliability. On a big, heavy, reliable vehicle like this that is really off-road capable, it's going to be a gas hog. It doesn't matter if you put a four-cylinder engine in it. It really doesn't even matter if you turn them into mild hybrids. They still aren't going to get good gas much. For example, the guy brought me a brand new Tundra with the V6 twin turbo. He was only getting 19 miles a gallon on the highway, and that was a hybrid V6 twin turbo. Even with the hybrid, it only got 19 miles a gallon on the highway because it's a big full-frame truck, and this is basically a full-frame truck that they call an SUV. They sell these because people want something like this. Why would you want to ruin it by putting in a four-cylinder turbo instead of the six-cylinder engine that they use for decades? People love them. They run forever if you take care of them. 
Why would you change something like that? I know they're all into this, oh, we want better gas lines, blah, blah, blah. You can't have a big, heavy, steel framed vehicle that's ever gonna get decent gas mileage. They just weigh too much. They're high up in the air, so they're not aerodynamic. They just are not gonna get good gas mileage. That's just the way it goes. Like the saying goes, you can't have your cake and eat it. You can't have a big, solid, four-wheel drive, truckish type SUV and get great gas mileage. It just isn't something you can physically do. Now as we shut the hood and look inside, these things are luxurious. You shut the door, just sounds solid. Beautiful black and chrome trim. Beautiful black interior, right? The sunroof, no. It's based on a truck. Who needs a stinking sunroof anyway? Two four-wheel drive, you can have it in high two-wheel drive, high four-wheel drive, or low four-wheel drive. And it's got a very dependable five-speed automatic with overdrive. Personally, in my own experience with four runners, I'd never seen one of these transmissions break. They're Toyota ASIN transmissions. They can just go on forever. And what people want, reliability. People don't really give that much of a difference of a few miles a gallon here or there when they're buying a vehicle like this. Hey, if they want gas mileage, they'll buy a vehicle like my Matrix, not this big 4Runner. As we start it up and take it for a drive, it just sounds powerful. Got a really nice backup camera, look. I can see the lions on the end of the driveway so I won't knock them over like people always do. First thing you notice, it's smooth idle. Totally smooth. It's nice and high up in the air, so you get a good view of things. Makes you feel secure. Of course, it says oil maintenance required because she brought it over here for me to change the oil. <laughs> I gotta do that later. I mean, you just feel safe in this thing. It's relatively high, but it's not topsy-turvy, you see? I mean, you take corners in it, no problems. You don't even hear the tires squealing. You just hear the oil in the back seat sliding back and forth that she has there for me to put in when I'm done. And the transmission is butter smooth. It just shifted, I didn't even notice it. You only notice the tachometer changes when it shifts. You don't really feel it. The braking is extremely smooth. Now, it is a big heavy vehicle, so we're taking it to the drag strip, but don't expect drag racing capabilities here. That's not what this is for. Plenty enough power for climbing up hills and stuff. It gets you where you're going. It it's a big, heavy vehicle, and it's very stable. You just don't expect it to be a real drag racer. It's no snail. It's got like 272 horsepower, so nobody's behind us, so we'll floor it. It throws you back in the seat a little. Got a nice sound for a V6. Smooth shifting, hey, we're going 55 in no time at all. And then if you need to pass somebody, you floor it. You can see it picks up quite nicely. So, it does what you want. I mean, driving down the road in this thing, you just feel like you're totally secure in your driving experience. You feel totally safe, yet it's totally comfortable, even though it's a full frame. It's got a nice ride. If you're into the modern conveniences, it's got traction control. You can turn things on and off. Now, I do have to say there's one thing I hate about this vehicle, and it has those stupid oil filters that are just paper elements, and they're inside a cursed, plastic holder, right? So you gotta have a special tool to take it off. And let me warn you, if you're gonna do it yourself, see this special tool, Motive X tools, listen. This is made out of metal. Do not buy one of these that's made out of plastic. The plastic is crap, it'll break and you'll go nuts. It's hard enough getting these dumb plastic assemblies off just to change this instead of having a cartridge filter that fits on it. It's just plain stupid, but that's one dumb thing Toyota did. I guess they were, we'll save the world. So the oil filter will only be a piece of paper and not a thin piece of metal with a paper in it. It's still polluting. It's just stupid. So Toyota, will you stop doing this? It's just plain dumb. But otherwise, you want an SUV that's like this for all around all wheel drive, a nice V6 engine, no turbo, not a four cylinder, but a V6 that's been out for ages. If you want to get one of these, my advice is get one right now or buy a used one in the future if they're going to go to the turbo fours because that's not what this vehicle is about. Put it in your other vehicles, but please, this is one of the best vehicles you ever made, Toyota. Don't ruin it by throwing a stupid four banger with a turbocharger on it. That's not what this vehicle is about. It's been proven. People love it the way it is. Don't ruin a good thing. 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.